Hey guys, I'm Tyler. Today I am finally gonna start building a DIY Tyler miter saw station. This miter saw station is actually gonna be built in two different parts. The first part, today I'm gonna go over building the lower carcass and the upper frames. And this is not just about me building this miter saw station. In this video, I also share how to get the absolute most efficient use of your time out of the shop. It's very precious to all of us, so I had a lot of repetitive motion in this. I share my thoughts in this video on little things you can do to help you cut down on those repetitive motions and speed up your time in the shop. Before we get started, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button so you never miss when I upload a new video. So you can see here about what it looks like. Right by the door, it's gonna be a little bit skinnier so that you don't bump into it right as you come in the door. And then it's gonna jet out with deeper drawers on the bottom to actually provide the tabletop for the miter saw. There's gonna be a dust hood here. I don't really have it drawn in yet. Now this is about 10 sheets of three quarter and five sheets of half inch plywood, give or take. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes. I got all of the pieces numbered in my SketchUp drawing corresponding to their cut list and how I need to cut it out of a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Um, I also have all these sheets numbered, like I said, so the number here corresponds to the number that is part of the assembly. So this drawer is parts 1, 3, and 19, and there's obviously two parts of number 1, two parts of number 3. And then you can find it, these are, uh, well the bottom is a 3 quarter inch sheet, so we can find it, what I say that was number 19 so let's find it here in the cutout uh, there's 25 there's 19 so this is the bottom of all those drawer pieces and how I need to cut it out of that 4x8 sheet of plywood so a big theme that's gonna keep coming up again and again throughout this build is time savings cut down on repetitive motions that I do in the shop the first big savings here is there are 15 sheets of plywood in this build, so I divided the 3 quarter and the half inch sheets and put them in different sides of the shop so that I could cut all of the 3 quarter first, which happens to be the frames and the bases of the drawers. So all of the pieces of this miter saw station, which there are about 45 different piece designs, and then there's multiples of each of those pieces, so there's probably over 100 pieces in this, all divided into the different sheets of plywood each numbered and color coded in the plans. So what I did was cut each sheet completely at a time. So this sheet here I did all the cuts on the table saw, any cuts that needed to be done on the miter saw, all at the same time so that every piece of this 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood was cut and numbered and placed in a certain spot in the shop so I didn't lose track of it and that I didn't cut it again. And once the first sheet was done, I pretty much repeated the process again and again and again, cutting all the different sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood. For the wider parts that were too dangerous to get with the table saw, and a little bit too tricky with the miter saw, I used a door board with my cordless circular saw. Just add a little bit of tape so you don't chip out the veneer of the plywood. So I got all the main chunks of the carcass or the frame cut out now and now I need to make a toe kick area. I want to make sure that I cut that so that the good side of the plywood is always out so if I do take these cabinets apart I can move them around the shop and I always have the good side out. I would recommend a little fence on your bandsaw so you can make these cuts quickly and repeatably. I used a couple spring clamps and a scrap piece of 2x4 to make my quick and temporary fence. You got your safety glasses? Right there. Thanks, sir. And 
now is the part of the build where I really started to find some time savings. This board, which is obviously sped up, actually took me 45 seconds to cut the four pocket holes in this. I'm able to improve this time down to 28 seconds with a couple things. First being, I align everything with some of the holes that are in the jig so that I can quickly move the board around. After cutting a few of these, I found that changing hands and putting the drill down was a huge waste of time and then even not taking the drill bit all the way out through my second hole saved even more time. Another little function that I found is that if I held the clamp instead of clamping it all the way into place, saved me a few seconds of time as well. So these boards are gonna be the interface between the cabinet itself and the floor, and I'm gonna do that with these T-nut and bolts through the bottom of the cabinet here, but I need to mount these to the cabinet and Yes, this is shop furniture, but it is maple plywood, so I want it to look as good as I can. On the outside, I'd prefer to see no fasteners. And what I'm going to do here is countersink these so that a 2-inch screw is able to go into the 3 quarter inch plywood, but not through. So all these are going to be countersunk, and then I'm going to flip them and drill a 3 8 hole through the side, which is going to accept this leveling foot. Moving on to actually assembling the frames, the first thing I did was make sure I selected my parts with both of the veneers and the toe kick in the proper direction. To save time while assembling these many different frames, there's a couple things that I did. The first was making sure that I had all the tools within quick reach, throwing a pile of screws in the middle of the frame so that I didn't have to reach into the bucket every single time, putting all the screws and tools in the middle of the frame so that as I spun it around they stayed in the same spot, saved a couple of seconds. And overall, for something like this, I really think it's just important to spend the time to make sure your cuts are square, and that really speeds up the process of assembly since you don't have to finagle things around. These are the solid wood additions that allow me to put the leveling feet in the frames, and these are just glued and screwed through the pilot holes that were drilled earlier. A little tip for time saving here is that I added the bolts while it was on the bench so that I didn't have to lift the frames up again and add them later. Once I set it down, I did check for one final square. Once I had the bottom frames in their respective locations, I used a couple different levels to level all of the different frames together. And then connected them all together for stability with a couple screws back in an area where you won't see them from the outside. Since I'm planning on adding some pretty heavy items to these drawers, I wanted to make sure they would not tip over, so I added some tap cons, but I made sure not to drill them all the way through the brick wall. And now add the upper frames, which I didn't show myself assembling because they are exactly the same as the bottom frame. Before permanently mounting any of the top frames, I wanted to make sure they were flat and even across the entire top surface, so I connected two of my safe cut rollers together, made sure I had the chop saw in the proper position to allow for the 3 quarter inch fence that's still going to go across all these boards, and then aligned everything against the chop saw. I forgot to drill some pocket holes in the bottom of the upper frames to connect it to the countertop, so I'm just using a couple of these L brackets and some 5 8 screws that I had laying around.
Well, there we go. Part one is done. All the frames and the upper carcasses are in place. And I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to finally have this. I'm thinking of it more as a bunch of storage drawers with a miter saw on top of it. Having the fence for repetitive cuts is certainly going to be awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button and please subscribe so you never miss when we upload a new video. Be sure to check back for part two where I show you guys how to finalize this build. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one.